Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you my favorite way to play Vi at the moment, and that is with Ignite, Green Jungle Item Potion, Press the Attack, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, with Free Boots, Cosmic, Attack Speed, AD, and Armor. And for our items, Divine Sunder, super consistent into Black Cleaver. These two items are pretty much your core. Everything after that situational, you can pick up armor, things like Thornmel, or Death Stance, or Magic Exists, with things like Maw. Or even the Spirit Vistage, because Spirit Vistage does interact with your shield mechanic on passive, which is pretty cool. I'm getting ready to smite just in case Jin tries to snipe over the wall. I'm going to go ahead and do raptors next. I like to do red wraps, or in this case, I like to gain bot. So three camp into bot is nice. So red wraps, Krugs into bot, or red Krugs wrap into bot, whichever side will put you closer after your third camp. Because level three plus red buff is really all you need. It's bot lane meta. So if you can get your bot lane ahead, you can take dragons all day long. Top lane, pretty irrelevant. They did run in off meta Karthus jungle and ranked very cool. That will be easy to gank. But like I said, I want to influence bot. And if your laners still push, even though you tell them not to, then you just reset and pick up a long sword. And that sets you up to win any solo fight, especially if you have ignite. With ignite plus long sword advantage, you can even solo things like Warwick, which is really cool. That's exactly what we're going to do here is pick up our long sword. It is a Sejuani, so we could probably solo her no matter what we built. But uh, just pretend she was like a Lee Sin or a Lee or something. Your toughest matchups on Vi aren't necessarily things that are going to kill you early. It's more things that are going to outscale you for team fights like Ramus or Ajax. Vi's first five levels are pretty strong, specifically at level three. And then her level six is really good. She tends to fall off after two full items a bit. So typically after Divine and Black Cleaver... If you don't have a, a big lead, you'll start to feel yourself slip a bit. Cool, Darius is pushing him away. I don't even think this was warded. I think he just started backing up. Kind of the Q auto into E. Darius needs to flash. Auto into E. I do have Ignite on him. He might actually just die from that. Get her with our Q auto. Carthus didn't actually die from our Ignite, unfortunately. We still might be able to set up a kill on him. He's very low. I might die, though, if I go for it. I have to wait for him to throw out a Q. Auto into E. And Cat is here, so I'm probably going to die. Yeah. I'm okay with that, though. I got, obviously, I'd rather live, but what am I going to do about the Katarina room? That was pretty funny. We'll go ahead and pick up, in this case, Sheen, since we can afford it. Otherwise, we could go for call-up fields. I think Sheen's a lot better for scrapping it out. We'll look for top scuttle if it's already gone. We'll just full clear down or look for another gank on Karth. He doesn't have flash, so top flash is basically nine minute. Should be easy to gank. I do have double smite charges, but look, we're timing our top gank right when Darius gets there. If you can time your jungle gank right when your laner gets there, they tend to work better because most enemy laners don't immediately run away the second they see your laner they typically take a second or two like he's gonna see him and you see how there was that delay like a second and a half like he didn't know if he should or not type of thing auto into e that happens literally every elo you'll see that for the most part the majority of the time you'll see that little pause for anywhere from a half a second to three seconds and then they start to run so as a jungler if you can time yourself to be there at that same time it leads to great things. Now we have over ganked a little bit. <laughs> we haven't been farming much, but we're set up to farm now. We have our full clear, nice and pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this blast cone. Okay, never mind. I can see the scuttle. I don't even need to hit it. Auto into E. Five clear is basically full HP all the time, no matter what. I used my Q auto Q reset. Your Q and your E are both auto resets on Vi. And we can knock the camp out of his auto attack. The reason why you don't see champions like Karthus top, even though it would seem like it's OP, because, oh, it's ranged. You see Vayne top, it ranged Vayne top strong. Vayne top has the same issue playing Karthus top has. It's squishy, and it's kind of slow. So if you get camped, you're going to die. And that's the big issue. Most top lane champions are generally durable, so they can survive even if they get dove or... They can just survive getting ganked and barely live and get away. Whether it be a Garen or Darius or a Nasus or whatever. 
But uh, picking something like Carlos, not so much. I have double smite charge. I'll go ahead and just use it here. It's not going to speed up this very much. That's all right, I guess. Got a potential mid gank. I am about to be six though. We'll just do drag. It feels a little bit awkward because I think Katarina technically has priority. <laughs> oh well, auto into E. Auto E, let's get our shield. Into the smite, beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my red for snappy level six. Press the attack, Vi is extremely good for ganking. Her solo potential is obviously lower than a lethal tempo or conqueror Vi. But as Vi, you're not really looking to invade the enemy's jungle necessarily and kill them. She's more of a ganker. She's really good at that. She's also good at soloing dragons because the shields plus her W constant attack speed to max health damage on every third auto attack. Gives her that shred as long as she's hitting the same target. Similar to a vein silver bolt. Get her with the R. Auto Q, auto E. Got it. <laughs> Corky's probably pissed, but uh, he didn't kill her. She was still alive, and I, I was the one with an ignite on her, so he shouldn't be mad, but he might be. The E range on Vi is crazy. I don't know why they don't have an indicator, though. And it doesn't show you the range on it. It does increase your auto range a little bit, but the actual cone damage is really far. You pretty much always lead him with R. That that way you don't miss anything. If you don't lead him with R, it's easy to miss. Because like your Q, they can flash it, juke it, whatever. You can just straight up miss it. Your R lands no matter what, and then you can just Q after. I want to smite this. I don't think Kata's going to be here. She could roam top. I, I assume she's just going to roam bot though. Into the queue. I got it. She's low. I need to run away from where Kata could be. Okay, cool. We're chilling. She's super low. So now what we should do is take Harold because we have top prio. Kata's bot side and Sedge is almost dead. Harold's free here. It's 300 gold. A chunk of XP and obviously you get the Harold eye itself. If you can hit it in the back. We barely dodged that big hit. <laughs> barely. Auto into E. Outside of the big hit, Harold really doesn't do any damage. R is up, so we should ideally look for something to gank. I'm not really seeing it. Typically, I just look at the pictures on the minimap, and then if I see something, like the picture's close, I'll look. And then I also examine HP. I'll... But uh, you really should try to look as much as you can, either by clicking on the minimap or using your F keys. So like here, for example, mid's neutral right now. My bot lane's pushing, top lane's pushing. All right, she's kind of screwed. She's got nowhere to go. I'm out of there. Did she flash? She kind of like wiggled around me. That was really awkward. She seems to be chasing me. I don't know if Sedge is here or what. What a turd burglar. She played that well enough. Auto into Q, auto into E. My smite charge is up. Vice clears are so good. She's kind of like a better version of Warwick because she has heavy CC. She has way more consistent gap closing. Wait, that actually worked. All right. My red buff's wearing off too. Might still be able to kill Kata. We'll see. Depends on where her wave's at when we go to kill her here. Sedge was in my jungle. Oh my gosh. The turd. This might be warded. Auto and E. She's smited. She's dead. Boom. Yeah, the moment she went into auto the turret, we had enough space to kill. That's why we were waiting. We wanted her to push the wave forward and greed for a plate. It's always key max and E max. W max last. W per level just doesn't give enough. 
auto in the E. We were waiting, since we didn't have two charges of E's anyways, we weren't wasting the cooldown. So we were kind of just waiting on the shield. No way. The blue wasn't going to die. My, sometimes your jungle pet just stops attacking. It has a weird proximity rule. I wish they would get rid of the pet and just bring back Hunter Talisman. Hunter's Talisman was way more useful. Way more consistent. Less buggy. Less glitchy. I honestly forget I even have a pet. Because it, it doesn't... It doesn't actually do anything. It's just a visual, essentially. I don't know what's warded and what's not. Ooh. I think I can actually take this turret here. Yeah, I think I can, right? Auto in the E. Barely dang, bro. That's gross how long that took. I honestly don't even know why it was that hard. I guess Harold doesn't count. Harold lives don't matter. They don't interact with the turret the way minions do. If you don't have a minion near you, she's going to hop over the wall. I got to keep running. But what was I going to say? Yeah, so if you don't have a minion with you within the last three seconds near the turret... The turret starts taking like a fourth damage, like 20% damage. So Harold does not count. Harold does not matter. Riot doesn't care about Harold, guys. Right, one minion is worth more than a Harold. Like that, that's not right. Okay, we got Divine. We got... Uh, this will go Plated into this. We're hecka tanky now. Kat is going the cheesy AD build. I hate it. I'm pretty sure her R applies on hit effects, so she's applying her Divine Sunderer. And Bork, whatever nonsense she decides to build. They need to bring back AP Kata. This whole AD on hit's a bit gross. Because she's already... She's a super sticky champion. You can't really get away from her. And what she ends up turning into is her auto attacks kill you. and She'll auto you to death. There's not much counterplay around that. She doesn't die when you hit her. If she hits you, it freaking hurts. Auto into E. We shield off pretty much all of her damage. Alright, we take drag now. They're low. Let me guess. Cat is here. Auto and E. Auto and R. Auto and E. Got ignite on her. Then you get away from the gin. Alright, we're chilling. That's huge. We take drag now for free. I have my shield coming up as well. I didn't shield anything there. <laughs> Since my Q didn't hit, I didn't think give me the shield. Earth Dragon is one of the lowest damage dragons in the game. Earth and Flame don't do a whole lot. It is AoE damage, but there's no skill behind it. Just don't stand on top of your teammates and effectively Earth and Flame Dragon don't do any damage. <laughs> the Wind Drag hurts. The... Uh, the blue one, I forget what it's called. Chemtech. The you know which one I'm talking about, the blue one. That one hurts. It does more damage, I think, the lower on health you are, or that maybe that was the green one, but basically the ones that don't do damage are the earth and fire. They attack slow, they, they attack themselves. Single target. Just don't do a whole lot. Cat is pushing up. We have more gold spent than her. It's an easy gank decision my r is about to be up i can 1v2 bot side if i use my r effectively oof Nautilus just got chunked too it's gonna make this so much easier probably just smite this guy oof he's auto into e auto yeah where are you gonna go buddy i don't think he thought about that part i r through the sedge q Auto in the E. Oh, I'm dead, huh? Auto EQ, auto. Oh, I got Kata, not bad. Cycled our abilities. Auto Q, auto E. I actually don't want the kill to go to Katarina, and she did get it, unfortunately. Karthus R didn't quite pinch me. It only did 124 damage, my goodness. 
Katarina is doing mixed physical and magic. Couldn't kill the Jin. Sedge was in the way. We do have double dragon though. So even though I'm dying too much, we have the objective angle. Definitely have the objective angle. Their team fight's probably better than ours with the Karthus Kata Sedge. I'm going to have to pick up magic resist this game. I hate building mob, but we kind of have to. Corky should outscale Katarina. He also has more CS in her. It takes so long to scale, though. He's a two or three item champ, and he also needs his package to really do stuff. This package gives him that guaranteed uh, engage and CC. I'm not going to keep the full clear here. My wraps aren't even up. Just go for scuttle. Plus my R is up. Whenever your R is up or it's up within the next 15 seconds, you should be looking for the gank angle. Darius is pushing up, probably kind of collapsing on him. I'd rather be bot though. Auto into E. We'll go into R on it. Hmm. This is bad. This cat is getting off way too much value. She's not even losing her turret when she does that. It's the thing. Auto and E. Q auto E. Yeah, I have the damage. They thought they thought they win that, but I can turn it 1v2 and wreck. Mm, yeah, Corky needs to take that turret. Cat has roamed so many times, she shouldn't really have turret anymore. Ooh, that was a good juke. Got her with smite, but she can't be slowed because of her passive at the time. Got it. Increased auto range from our E active. Big, big, big. We have a lot of mobility in combat because of the black cleaver through the carve stacks. Dragon up in 56. We'll want to spend our gold for that. Uh, they don't have that much self-healing. No one on their team really heals other than like Jim Fleet and Cataconk Conqueror. Oh, I guess maybe Sedge, Radiant Virtue. We can AoE apply the uh, Executioners or Chempunk through our EAOE or RAOE. Oh no, that's not good. Auto E, we'll get the gen by pushing Nos aside. Auto E, auto. Stop her R with my Q, auto E. It jinx almost choked there so hard. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, Corky's got a pinch here. He should be able to get Dragon, I think. He doesn't have any self healing. I forget which one. 20% increased damage and 7% damage reduction against champions for every dragon that the champion team has. What? Dragon hates those who slay their kin. So they're harder to take. I didn't even know that was a thing. 20% 20 20 increased damage and 7% reduction. Wow. So it does more damage to you and takes less damage if you've already taken them previously. I had no clue that was a thing. Uh, when did they add that to the game? I look at the patch notes. It's like... What in the world? <laughs> I missed that. No clue. Like realistically, I don't think it really changes anything, but uh, it's an interesting concept. I think that just goes to show how broken Dragon is. It's not a real, I think something that League doesn't do very well is making objectives dangerous. Like taking the objective should be hard, but really any champion can solo it. Just do they have enough time to do so. It's not like you and your teammates have to get together and like tactically take down a dragon or a bear and you just stand there and auto and then it dies. So even though they gave it ooh, ooh, increased 7% damage, it doesn't matter. It's more about the thing that surprised me is it takes 20%. Wait, was it? I forget which. It was like 7 or 20% that it took reduced, but that's kind of annoying that that's the case. 
It'd be nice if Morg would stop going in so deep. I have to R to stick on top. They can't kill me. Vi is way too tanky for this. I have Carve, Auto, and a Q, Auto. Smited. I have my Ignite up as well. When you play Vi like this, it, it makes you so freaking tanky. That uh, kind of champions that rely on their base damage, like a Nautilus or a Sejuani, they do nothing to us. We get, we're constantly getting shielded by green jungle item and our passive shield, which is 317. Like a 317 shield, it interacts with your armor and magic resist as well. So if it's a 300 shield plus it reduces physical damage by 54% and magic by nearly 50%. So it really is bigger than what it seems. Like a 300 shield in practice is more like a 450 shield realistically. At least with our current amount of resistances. Were we supposed to Baron there? I wasn't even paying attention. They definitely know we're on it. I'll always take the plants in the back before you do Baron. Auto into E. Now we take no damage. Got it. Decent smite. They worded it in the back. We just camp drags. When you're in this winning situation, show up to drags and take them. You don't have to play for kills. Kills only are an advantage when the game's at a neutral position, because then it allows you to take objectives safely without the enemies being able to contest, or at the very least, if they do contest, they'll lose the fight. But once you've already established a winning position, that's the biggest mistake people make in solo queue, is they keep doing stupid stuff. Like, for example here, what hap Like, what's the point of this? What does this do? Even if Darius gets this turret, does that change anything from the perspective of, like, Draxel? Or if Darius dies here, it actually makes a big difference, because he's giving them gold, and then they can start to suit up more for the Draxel fight. So like this play was like all risk. There was virtually no reward because once we get Draxel, the game's over. You no know, matter, like generally speaking, no matter how poorly we play, once we have Draxel, we basically just win. Therefore, any play that has a high threshold of risk, regardless of the reward, is so pointless. You just show up to Drag fight. Like here, I shouldn't even really be playing past the neutral point of the map, past vision. Neither should Corky. Just show up to Drag. Empower Recall OP. Ooh, got that moss. Super cheap since we've already nearly finished it. Uh, from this position, I would say going in for like Kempunk would be good. If they had a Thick Boy, Ramus, Orn, Leona, those types of things, we would definitely push for Lord Doms. Part of the issue with Lord Doms, though, on Vi is they have to have so much more HP than you because Black Cleaver and Divine give a lot of HP. So typically, you'll see Lord Doms on more of an Eclipse Vi build, because Eclipse doesn't give you HP, but it still makes you tanky through its shield. So on this build, you wouldn't really want it. More Eclipse Vi. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. Auto E. Auto E, auto. They're low now. They should be able to get back in time for Drag Soul, though. I need to break this. I thought the ward was still there. Where'd it go? I'm up kind of deep on the map. We have 56 and 54% uh, resistances here. Not a big fan of Chemtech drags. They're not that useful. Auto and E. And they queue out. Wow, they're playing hard for this. Auto E, auto Q, auto E. Down you go. And I think that might. Oh, we don't have the minions. I'm out of here. I want to get Draxel. If we get inhib and die and then don't get the Draxel, that's bad. Draxel is the most important. Other than just breaking their nexus, Draxel is literally like the best objective in the game. Because it's a dragon plus the soul. We're going to get extra 6% tenacity, heal, and shield as well. Cool. And what does this Draxel do? Oh, yeah, so it's damage resistance and increased damage. I forget when they did that. It used to be like 8%, and then. 
it was five or six percent. I think they buffed it up to nine, then they buffed it up to eleven because Tem Chemtech Soul was hyper underperforming. Eleven and eleven does seem decent enough. I do think though, from the winning position, because assuming you're getting all the dragons, it's overwhelming odds your team's already ahead, right? So with that being said, Chemtech Drag is still the worst soul in the game. Because why should anyone on our team even fall below half health necessarily, right? Therefore, yeah, it's just not. I would much rather have any of the other ones which are universally useful regardless of your HP. Auto E, auto R. Yeah, you can't tie Vi down. That's what makes her so freaking good. Auto E. Her R goes through all CC. Ooh, good block. But he's straight into the Morg Snare. Walk around him. He's smited. Down they go. Once the mob pops and is triggered, as long as you don't leave combat, you get a bunch of extra stats. You get uh, an extra 12% life still, for example. It used to be more than that back in my day. Season 3, Season 5, Season 8. And still, 12% life still strong. Because it doesn't go away as long as you stay in combat. We don't have Baron buff. Oh, I don't really want to die for this. The red buff's up. We can't actually end here. Darius is in trouble. I'm missing too much health to bail him out. Oh wow, looks like he can just do it on his own. He's only two item, I don't know how he did that. I mean, Cat is two and a half herself, he just got his force of nature, he didn't have that for that fight. I'm not gonna queue onto that, it's not worth it. If we kill him it changes nothing, if they kill me it changes everything. Should really just go to Baron now. Baron and GG's. It'll give us the minion resistances and minion power to get through everything that they got. I'll break that. They really want to stop us from taking this, huh? Got it. She almost outsmited me. Nice try from her. Oh! Oh! We're popping off! <laughs> I'm too tanky! <laughs> the life still, man. Damage blocked by shield. It hasn't really blocked any damage for that. I'd imagine that life still was useful. Their whole team's dead. Vi's so good, dude. She is. She's a. She's just a better version of Warwick and Zin Zhao. Any melee jungler. It, it's hard to match what she can do. Her ganks, clear speed, scalability, team fighting, solo potential. It's all there, and at at a higher amount than most let's look at the graphs for damage delta enemy champions we did have the most in the game and then pretty much everyone else was tied other than the supports and sejuani for damage taken we were up there not quite the most but pretty close for self mitigated we were the most by far so if you count that delta of twelve thousand and you add it to damage taken we comfortably did take the most damage in the game by nearly um uh, ten thousand so about 9k very nice for runes, high value. All in all, Vi, amazing champion. You just can't pick on your team's AP, but definitely my way to play. You cover all your bases with Ignite. No enemy jungler can solo you. With the three camp clear into gank, you're getting out early pressure, and you set yourself up for an early recall into longsword. So you get the pressure. You have Ignite to solo them if they're aggressive with you. The enemy jungler and then you get the long sword to where they can't really beat you on scuttle fight it kind of sets you up for everything now the downside is you do miss out on minimum of one monster camp in terms of clear speed i think it's well worth it though for all the upsides if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe my name is king sticks thank you for watching and i'll catch you guys next time